Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's story, Hong Kong Express. I saw him back in 55 when the train still ran. I was fresh out of college, a westerner in a foreign land, had lint on my suit and grease in my hair, and I was pleasantly surprised to see a fellow foreigner visiting the turbulent region which was undergoing a massive despotic shift at the time. He sat in the way back car with some sort of soup in front of him. Delicately, he picked up a cracker with his old, wrinkled hands and it fell into the broth. He gave it a swirl, blew on it, and looked up when he saw me watching him. On trains, there's a sort of familiarity you achieve with your fellow passengers. I can't describe it, but it comes naturally with the rustle of the tracks below and the soft whisper of the land passing by. Now the seat, he mumbled. He was old enough to be my grandfather, wizened yet sprightly, full of life, energetic, bubbly, and behind his horn-rimmed glasses I felt he had something to teach me, as strange as that sounds now. I sat next to him and stared into his eyes, and they stared back. All the while, up ahead in coach class I could make out the calm chatter of Asian businessmen. I wondered what he, a stranger, undoubtedly American like myself, could be doing out here in the switchyards. Soon enough, he dipped his spoon in. It was holding some kind of wriggling thing, some pinkish-brown aquatic flesh. He moved as he raised it to his lips, a connoisseur of cuisine to be sure, one who'd sampled many dishes all the world over. I averted my eyes as he inserted the thing still wriggling between his parsed lips, and then wiped his mouth with a cloth napkin and sat back giving a delighted sigh. What brings you out here? He whispered as the hills enshrouded in darkness, secrets of the Orient drifted off and the whistle blew, signaling arrival at a station. The inertia knocked over a salt shaker and I reached over and righted it. Try as they had, the trains here were still far from smooth or luxurious. Through his eyes I saw a swirling mist. His glasses fogged and behind this layer of condensation I noticed something like a red glow, ever so slightly red, scarlet, there in the silence of the train that had stopped. I could hear the people boarding, maybe three cars down, footsteps on the wooden slats, slats which then became rugs, luggage nestled in the overhead compartments, idle chatter. How do you do that? I asked in awe. Enhanced sensory perception, he said. Comes with the trade. You see things long enough, you hear enough, it all comes together. One large world, infinitely repeating. Nothing new under the sun, as they say. Care for more? I nodded. He took off his glasses, blew on them, and wiped them with the napkin, then replaced them on his face. The light came back, the car seemed to darken, and I saw the interior of a cafe, perhaps one down the street. A brawny sailor and his companions, bartender pouring drinks, people singing tunes that I didn't know in a language I also didn't know. Not Cantonese, not Mandarin. A strange, beautiful song. Then the vision faded, and I was back in the car. The wheels had started up, and they were quick. I looked at him and didn't know what to say. <laughs> That's quite all right, he said. But of course, there's a cost to all this. The things in his suit wriggled. He blew on them. Every time, he stated bluntly, staring out the window at the beautiful Hong Kong sky. Every time, it takes a few seconds off your life. Sometimes even minutes. The universe is an intricate network of give and take, cost, and labor. I suppose you'd call it entropy. Everything has a price. With us, it's time. 
your life will be a little shorter. Unless the train stopped, the speaker came on, and I knew this was my stop. A few minutes off my life. Uh, who could say? But something had happened. He had powers of which I knew not, but those, those could be reconciled another time, another place, maybe another year. This is my stop, I said as I picked up my suitcase and shambled out the door. I left him there, eating his meal, lights on in the car and outside, the cricket-filled hazy darkness of a Hong Kong night. So stay scary, wildlings. Never be afraid to say no, even if it's just for now, and make the most of your nights.